Welcome to Jeremy's IT Lab. This is a free, complete course for the CCNA. If you like these videos, please subscribe to follow along with the series. Also, please like and leave a comment and share the video to help spread this free series of videos. Thanks for your help. Also, remember to download this practice lab from the link in the description and try it out yourself in Packet Tracer. If you want more labs like these, I highly recommend picking up Boson's NetSim for the CCNA. Click the link in the video description to check it out. It's a network simulator like Packet Tracer, but it's even better, and it includes all of these guided labs to not only help you get hands-on practice, configuring and troubleshooting, but also deepen your understanding of the exam topics. I used it myself when studying for my certifications, so I feel confident about recommending it to all of you. Watch until the end of this video. We'll take a look at a lab from NetSim. If you want to get your own copy of NetSim, please follow the link in the video description. In this lab, we will do some basic STP configurations. STP runs by default, so you don't actually have to configure it. However, if you just leave it at the default settings, there is no guarantee that traffic will be following the optimal path. So it's a good idea to explicitly configure which switch should be the root for each VLAN, and also set different routes for different VLANs, so each VLAN uses different links, balancing the load of the network traffic. Step one in this video is to use the CLI to check the current STP topology, identify the root bridge, and the STP role and state of each port on each switch. I'll start on switch one. First, let's get into privileged exec mode, enable, we only need one show command for this, show spanning tree. Information is displayed separately for VLAN 1 and VLAN 2. However, because I haven't done any configuration yet, their settings will be the same. The same root bridge and the role of each port will be the same also. So let's just look at VLAN 1. Switch 1 is not the root bridge. Notice the MAC address is different in the root ID section and the bridge ID section. As for the port roles, you can see them here. F03 is the root port, so I'm guessing switch two is the root bridge. Let's go on switch two now to check if that is the case. First, enter privileged exec mode. Enable, show spanning tree. In the root ID section, it clearly states this bridge is the root. You can also see that all of its interfaces are designated ports in a forwarding state. This is the case for both VLAN 1 and VLAN 2. Without any specific configuration, each VLAN will have the same root and the port roles will be the same in each VLAN. Next, let's go on switch three. We know it's not the root, but which port do you think is the root port? It should be F02 because it's directly connected and all of these connections are fast ethernet. There are no gigabit ethernet connections which have a lower cost. Enable, show spanning tree. Indeed, F02 is the root port and F01 is designated. Finally, let's check switch four. It's F01 interface should be the root port. Enable, show spanning tree. As expected, F01 is the root port. Also, F02 is blocking. The role says alternate. This means a non-designated port. Step two is to configure load balancing by making switch one the primary route for VLAN one and secondary route for VLAN two and the opposite on switch two. Let's return to switch one. Go to global config mode, conf t. Let's configure it as the route for VLAN one. Spanning tree VLAN one, route primary. Remember to include the VLAN in the command. In Cisco's PVST+, all configurations are done on a per VLAN basis. Next, the secondary route for VLAN 2. Spanning tree VLAN 2, route secondary. Now I'll hop onto switch 2. Conf T, spanning tree VLAN 1, route secondary. Spanning tree VLAN 2, route primary. Okay, that's it. So what is the STP role and state of each port now? Well, here on switch two, in VLAN two, all ports should be designated. But now on switch one, 
F03 should be the root port, because it's directly connected to the new root, switch 1. Let's check. Do show spanning tree. So for VLAN 2, it is still the root. But for VLAN 1, F03 is now the root port, as expected. The other ports are designated ports in a forwarding state. Let's go back and check on switch 1. In VLAN 1, all ports should be designated, but in VLAN 2, F03 should still be the root port, like before. Do show spanning tree. So indeed, in VLAN 2, F03 is the root port. F01 and F02 are designated. In VLAN 1, however, switch 1 is now the root bridge. So all ports are designated. In step 3 and 4, we are going to manipulate a couple STP port settings and see the effects. First up, we will increase the cost of Switch 4's F02 interface to 100 in VLAN 1 and see if it selects a different root port. First, let's confirm that the current root port is F02. It should be for VLAN 1. Let's view the spanning tree for VLAN 1 only. Show spanning tree VLAN 1. Okay, as expected, F02 is the root port. It has the lowest cost to switch 1, the root. Let's change that cost. Before doing so, what do you think will happen? What is the first criteria in selecting the root port? It's the cost. So increasing the cost to over 5 times the current cost should cause switch 4 to select a different root port. Let's try. The configuration is done from interface config mode, so interface F02, spanning tree VLAN 1, cost 100. Now let's view the spanning tree just for VLAN 1 again. Do show spanning tree VLAN 1. Okay, as expected, F02 is no longer the root port. It is changed to a blocking state, and now F01 is the root port. For step 4, we will increase the priority of switch 1's F01 to 240, the highest possible priority number. However, in STP, a lower number is actually treated with higher priority. So really, we are lowering the priority to 240, even though the number itself is greater. Will this affect switch 3's selection of a root port? First up, let's check switch 3's root port for VLAN 1. It should be F01. Let's just view VLAN 1 again. Do show spanning tree VLAN 1. Indeed, F01 is the root port. Now, if we set the priority of Switch 1's F01 port to 240, will this affect Switch 3's root port selection? What do you think? Actually, it shouldn't. Sender port ID is actually the last tiebreaker, after port cost and sender bridge ID. Because F01 has a lower root cost than F02, 19 versus 38, the port priority should have no effect. Let's go configure that port priority on switch 1. Enter interface config mode, interface F01, spanning tree VLAN 1, port priority 240. First up, let's view that priority here on switch 1. Do show spanning tree. VLAN 1. Here for interface F01, you can see the priority dot number column. This is the port ID, and the priority has increased to 240. Now let's check on switch 3. Use the up arrow to return to the previous command and hit enter. As expected, there is no change. F01 is still the root port. Finally, let's configure PortFast and BPDU guard. Before doing so, let's test PortFast. I will turn on link lights for this. Click Options, Preferences, and then Show link lights here. Next, let me delete the connection between Switch 3 and PC1. Now I will connect them again, PC1 to Switch 3's F03 interface. After reconnecting the two devices, Switch 3's F03 interface has to go through the STP listening and learning states before it can forward traffic again. So the link light will remain orange for about 30 seconds.
Let's go on the CLI and configure both PortFast and BPDUGuard on F03. Interface F03. Spanning tree PortFast. Spanning tree BPDUGuard enable. Okay, that's it. Pretty simple configurations. Now that PortFast is enabled, I will delete that connection once more. And now let's reconnect them again. PC1 to switch 3's F03. Notice that it moves immediately to forwarding. The link light is green right away. Now, because BPDU guard is enabled, if we connect F03 to another switch and a BPDU is received, the interface should be shut down. Let's try that. I'll delete the connection once more. And this time, let's use a crossover cable to connect F03 to switch 4. When switch 3 receives a BPDU from switch 4 on its F03 interface, the interface is shut down to avoid a loop, and now the link light is red. Let's delete that connection again, and use a regular straight through cable to connect to PC1. Now let's return to the CLI, and to enable this interface that was disabled by BPDU guard, I will shut down, and then no shut down the interface. Okay, now F03 is back up and running. Okay, since we finished our experiment, I'll just configure the same on switch 4. Interface F03, spanning tree port fast, spanning tree BPDU guard enable. Okay, that's all for this lab. Next up, let's take a look at a lab in Boson NetSim. Okay, for today's Boson NetSim lab preview, we are once again doing a lab from NetSim for Encore. This is a CCNP level lab. The reason for that is spanning tree configuration isn't actually in the CCNA exam topics list, so it's not included in Boson NetSim for CCNA. However, I want to show you a lab anyway, so let's do a CCNP level lab. The one we're going to look at is spanning tree protocol PVST load balancing. So you click on the lab here and then click on load lab but I've already done that. So this is the lab. Uh, create a VTP management domain for distribution of VLANs to all switches and configure a primary and secondary root bridge for the VLANs in the network. So this is definitely a CCNP level lab. It's quite challenging, quite extensive, and it's not just about configuration, but Boson asks you a lot of really good questions to test your understanding of spanning tree protocol. And I think I've said it before, but that's something I really like about NetSim. It's not all about the configuration. It really does test your understanding and really help, get you, help you get ready for the exam. So these are commands you need to know. Although this is a CCNP level exam, these are actually all commands you already know. Show spanning tree, show VLAN, spanning tree VLAN root, spanning tree VLAN priority, switch port mode, encapsulation.1q. So these are all commands you already know. So although this lab might be a challenge, I think it actually is doable for someone studying for their CCNA. So I'm not actually gonna do the configurations in this demonstration. I just wanna walk through the lab and see what kind of tasks you're asked to do. Task one is perform the initial configurations. So, so these aren't actually spanning tree configurations. These are uh, trunk configurations, VTP configurations, and VLAN configurations. So that's something I really like about this lab. It's not focused entirely on spanning tree. It helps you review other topics you've studied. Okay, plan, primary, and secondary root bridge configuration. So in task two, you're not actually doing any configuration. You're examining the network, answering some questions, thinking about what configurations you're going to do, before you actually implement and verify the configurations in task three. So what kind of questions are you asked? Uh, for example, number one, how is the information provided by the network engineer useful? So that is in this explanation here. Your network engineer has determined that VLANs one through three represent half of the traffic and VLANs four through six represent the other half. So how is this information useful to you? And if you don't know how to answer one of these questions, if you look at the lab solutions, you can find Boson's explanation. Uh, here is task two. So these are Boson's answers to those questions. 
Okay, task three is actually implement and verify the configurations. So configure the primary and secondary root bridge for different VLANs to ensure load balancing. And task four, this is something you're not gonna find on most practice labs, certainly not my practice labs. Document the network. Look at these questions. How many root ports can each non-root bridge have per STB instance? How many designated ports can a non-root switch have? Then here, this one I really like, start to document the network. So you're going to have to use show commands to find the bridge ID, root bridge ID, root port, and path cost root of each of these switches. And then here, use the network diagrams below to document the root bridge, root ports, designated ports, alternate ports, and block ports. And then question five, what path will a VLAN one packet take from A switch one to R2 via C switch two? So again, these are just really good questions to really test your understanding of spanning tree protocol. And if you ever have problems answering these questions, once again, just look at the lab solutions and you can find Boson's explanations here. For example, these are all the blocking ports and such in these network topologies here from question four. Okay, so if you want to get a copy of NetSim, and I highly recommend you do, as you can see, these are really great in-depth practice labs that not only test your knowledge of the show commands, the configuration commands, but your knowledge of the topics as a whole. Um, so if you want to get a copy, please follow the link in the video description. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and share the video with anyone else studying for the CCNA. If you want to leave a tip, check the links in the description. I'm also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or basic attention token tips via the Brave browser. That's all for now.